Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Catherine Llewellyn here. And she helps people with personal growth. And there's a laundry list of things she does. And I'm going to let her explain all that. So tell us more about you. Thank you. And thanks for having me on the show. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I, I work with people who feel like they want to make some sort of a shift in their life. Um, usually a, like a positive shift more more often than a, a how can I put it? Um, it? It's not a situation where people have got a massive problem that they want me to fix. It's usually more people who feel like, I feel like there's more for me. I could be more fulfilled. Perhaps I could make more of a contribution. Um, I could be more creative, more imaginative, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people these days who are really, into the idea of, of being the best they can be and just keeping on growing. And I find that really exciting. I, I think that's more true now than it was when I was a child. When I was a child, you only ever asked someone to help you if you thought there was something badly wrong with you. And you tried to keep it a secret because it was a shameful thing. And the world is so different now, which I think is fantastic. So I'm really helping people to elevate their consciousness to become more self-aware, more connected with their higher self, more uh, spiritually connected, whatever it is that they want to do. And I do that through a variety of different modalities, uh, one of which is humanistic psychology, coaching and mentoring work, Uh, one of which is energy healing modalities, whether that's treatments or Uh, attunements and activations and teaching people how to use those modalities and one of them is conscious dance where I'm supporting people to give their give everything to the body and let the body run with whatever they're experiencing and whatever wants to come through as an expression and so some people work with me in just one of those areas some work with me in two of them and some people work with me in all of them and obviously that you can imagine People experience a lot of fun, a lot of interesting challenge, and some extraordinary shifts take place. Wow. And you're a writer? Uh, Yes, I forgot about that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't done any writing lately. Um, Yeah, I've got, I think, uh, five or six e-books now. Um, And uh, those are on Amazon, but they're also on my website. People can get them on my website if they want to. And... um, that was something which originally I hired a marketing guy who was about a third of my age at the time <laughs> and it's fresh out of college and full of enthusiasm. And he said, you've got to write an ebook. You, you've got to create bait. So you put up this thing and you say, if you give me your email address, you can have this ebook. And I said, that sounds like a really stupid and manipulative <laughs> idea. Right? He said, no, you've got to do it. Everyone's doing it now. <laughs> and so I, um, I thought, I can't write, I can't write. So I spoke to my my practitioner supervisor and he, as well as being an incredible supervisor, is also a writer and a filmmaker. And he said, look, if you want to write, if you can talk, you can write. And Catherine, you can definitely talk. <laughs> I went, yeah, guilty as charged. So I said, but how do I get past this block? And he said, he, he helped me get past the block that I had and... Um, I've since discovered, actually, that anybody can write. Anyone can write, um, even if they're just writing, I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, everyone can write, but the skill comes in the editing. When you come back and you edit it and polish and kick it around until it comes out into something that's of value. So anyone can write and anything can be edited to become something of value. And there are various ways of actually engaging with that process and enjoying it, which I learned how to do over a period. And now I love to write when I've got the time. I do love to do it. And you also have a podcast. Yes, I do. And um, that was another one where for years everyone said, Catherine, you've got to do the podcast. You've got a great voice. You have to do a podcast. And I said, you do a podcast. (laughs) Why do I have to do it? It Sounds like a lot of work for no money. And um, But in the end, um, about halfway through 2021, I was um, not happy, let's just say, and we won't go into why that was, 
in the world at that time. And I thought, I'm stuck in my house. What am I going to do? I can't, you know, see clients. What am I going to do? I've got to get my voice out or I'm going to go mad. And I thought, I'll do a podcast. And I just started it then. And then I thought, I've got to turn it into something valuable for people. So I have thought about that a bit and got some advice. And and I just started doing it. I did 30 solo episodes to begin with. Wow. Um, and I was so I was so nervous before doing each recording, even though I was completely by myself in my house. No one knew I was doing it. If it was rubbish, I could throw it away. And yet I was nervous. It was really weird. And I just, you know, kept going and kept going and kept going. And then one day I was ready to have guests. I was confident enough. And then I started having guests. And so now that's been going two and a half years, that podcast. It goes by fast too, doesn't it? I know. Now it's like a, it's part of my life now. It's just so much fun. I've learned a lot. Uh, it's really changed me doing it. And I've met some extraordinary people. I think that's the biggest benefit is meeting so many incredible folks. And, you know, somebody out there, even if it's only one person, can be affected by your guest or something profound that you say. And that gives you the purpose just to keep doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been, I guess, about five years now. But this particular one has been about three and mm. it gives me a purpose. I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you know, I believe part of my mission in my life, I think what I'm supposed to be doing is living a good life mm -hmm. and encouraging other people to live a good life um, and, and not being a victim of things that might be going on that I might think are not good. You know, that's not my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I said, it feels almost like a spiritual mission. To, to be doing that and he said I was thinking the same thing just this morning <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the techniques that you use like do you do tapping or anything like that no no I don't do that um the the only um like uh technique treatment techniques uh, if you like that I do are Pelua Reiki um past life assimilation technique and a thing called arbor therapy so reiki everybody knows what that is i think right. um Pelua, and i also teach reiki when people want to learn it um Pelua is um it, it's it's a it's a word that means radical shift in consciousness and it's only been around for about 20 years it's uh, in in australia and it's recently come to the UK a, a few years ago. It started coming to the UK. And there are literally a handful of teachers and practitioners scattered around the world, you know, who traveled to Australia to be trained or teachers came from Australia and went to other places. So it's quite new. Um, that's a hands off treatment. And it's uh, it's a situation. Pelua energy is a very pure energy direct from source it's a much um finer energy than than reiki uh reiki is a much more physical energy if you like um so pelua contracts directly with the consciousness of the client so there's that direct relationship between the pelua energy and the client's consciousness and through that contract that's made the pelua will, will then deliver what that person needs for the shift in consciousness that that is required and, and of course, our consciousness affects everything in our lives. So when our consciousness shifts, everything else shifts in our lives, whether that's physical, mental, emotional, rational, whatever it is, uh, shifts. And it lasts. It doesn't kind of wear off after a couple of weeks because it's at that root level of consciousness. Um, and I also teach people and attune people as Reiki practitioners, uh, excuse me, Pelua practitioners as well. Um, the past life assimilation work, I am actually touching the person uh, to do that. Um, and that's, oh, I don't know how to describe it. it. It's energy work, but it's also psychological work at the same time. And that's about um, assimilating and transforming blocks from past lives. 
So that's if somebody feels they have a block or a problem and they feel that it's to do with a past life, that's what they do. Arbor is something I very rarely do because it's a last resort treatment. Um, with Arbor, you actually cut a piece out of the aura, you retune it and you put it back in and it then, uh, if you like, ripples out through the entire aura and it has a very profound effect, but, it's, but it's, it can be quite a shocking treatment because it's very intense because of the way it works. So that's something I'll only do if someone has literally tried everything else and that's what's left. Do you have to physically be with that person in order to do that? At the moment, yes. It's I don't touch the client in that particular treatment, but at the moment, I yes, I do have to be in the same room. Mm. Although all of these energy modalities, as they evolve over time and as more people work with them, things then shift and change. So there will come a time when it will be possible to do arbor therapy remotely, uh, but not yet. Mm. With the past life work, does that involve hypnosis? No. Um, no, it's not hypnosis. It's, um, But there is an aspect of it which is a bit like meditation. No. So the person is actually they're using their consciousness and their mind as part of it, and they're being guided. I'm guiding them in that and helping them work with what they're what they're finding i guess it's similar to but not exactly like past life regression um i haven't done past life regression so i can't speak about it with authority um this is specifically to pinpoint a block and transform the block that's what it is it's not about discovering what our past lives were who was i in a past life and all that kind of thing it's literally a, like a sort of um, surgical strike kind of thing, which is mm. to go straight to the past life where the block began. And sometimes the person, the person doesn't know what the block is or which past life it's from. Uh, they just know that they feel that there is a block there and they can't seem to unravel it. Often people have tried other things uh, like talking therapies and things like that to try and get to it and they haven't managed to get to it. So, but with this particular modality, the, the way that it works is it, it takes the person straight to the, the crux, to the place where that thing happened, where that, whatever it was happened, usually some sort of trauma occurred, which has then uh, stayed in them and reverberated through the lives since then up till now. And it's still playing out. I, I was actually brought up in a nature cure environment and um, one of my father was a naturopath and osteopath, mm -hmm. which at the time was considered to be really, really weird and wrong. You know, it was really not popular then in the 1950s and 1960s. Um, but his whole thing was if, if, if the body can uh, create something in the body, such as an illness, it can also create wellness because it's two sides of the same thing. So right. that was his approach. So he went into, and he used to get a lot of people coming to see him who'd been told by the doctors that they had something incurable. And he would come into supper and say, well, they're cured. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> he's no longer alive, so I can't give you his number. But um... <laughs> Well, I'll just get my psychic medium friend to hook me up. <laughs> yeah, his name's Douglas Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> but that was I, growing up in that environment where it really changed my made a big difference to my attitude to um well things in my own body mm -hmm. you know i had a situation a couple of years ago I'd, I'd moved house and i'd been very active managing the what needed to be done to the house which was basically derelict when i moved in right and mm -hmm. freezing cold and no heating and everything else and I didn't look after myself while I was doing this. I wasn't stretching and walking and doing all the things I should be doing. And um, at the end of it, after five months or something, my knees were in a terrible state. Oh, and I, I had that. back pain and stuff. And people were saying, oh, it's arth arthritis at your age now. It's arthritis, you know. You, you need steroid injections and then you'll probably need a um, you know, knee operation in six months' time. And I said, yeah, no. <laughs> 
that's not going <laughs> to happen. So I found a yoga teacher and said, will you work with me one-on-one? I am terrified of yoga. I hate it. But if you work with me one-on-one, be really gentle with me. I want to fix these knees. And everything was better than ever within nine months. Wow. Well, I have seen different techniques work and and stuff that's you'd think, oh, no, there's no way. Mm -hmm. One in particular, and I, I hate talking about myself, but somehow I always end up doing it. I I suffer from depression, anxiety, and PTSD from some things that happened to me as a child. And, uh, you know, you go to the psychiatrists and psychologists and all that, and that's wonderful. Don't get me wrong, but they just want to throw all these drugs at me. Well, I'm already taking stuff for diabetes and high cholesterol, and, you know, I, I got a laundry list. Like, I'm sick of taking all this medicine. It's not helping. I still feel like I just want to end it all. Uh, You know, I can't go into a crowd without freaking out. I'm just, I'm tired of it. And someone has suggested meditation. And I got into really deep meditation. And I was able to get off all those medicines. I feel better than I have since I, I was a little kid. Now, I have to say, don't. Go throw your pills away and start meditating. Think it's going to be okay overnight. I had to wean myself off of these medicines because they make you feel terrible if you just go cold turkey. And that's between you and your doctor. I'm not telling anybody to do any of that. I'm just saying it worked for me. Mm. Yeah. And I think, I actually think that the, the decision to try something and the decision to be open to the possibility Mm -hmm. of a miraculous outcome, I think is a big part of the healing. Because in a way, we're saying to the universe, I'm open to receiving the gift of health. I'm open to that. I'm willing to do, and I'm willing to do the work. And in meditation, you know, I'm willing to be with myself. You know, a a lot of um, illness and ill health, and whether it's physical or psychological that people have, are the direct result of avoiding discomfort or avoiding being with themselves. Mm-hmm. And I've done it and I probably will do it again. You know, it's it's one of the things that we do because we feel uncomfortable in our skin. You know, we 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 don't like ourselves and we feel shame or something. And so we'll do something to get a run away from that. But running away from ourselves is fracturing to us. It fractures us. And and that's when we start to break ourselves down. Mm-hmm. So meditation is so wonderful. If somebody finds a meditation practice that works for them, very powerful. Oh, yeah. We took a trip to New York and I was able to get on a subway without freaking out. I can go into a concert or a, a hockey game or anything, being in a crowd doesn't bother me at all anymore. Mm. Uh, my son, my youngest son, when he was born, he had every allergy under the sun. He had breathing problems. He was deaf in one ear and partially deaf in the other. They told us he was going to be completely deaf by the time he started school. You know, just this poor kid was in all kinds of misery. I had to get in a tent and do breathing treatments with him and you know, we had to be careful about what he ate and what he was around. And, you know, it's just a little kid shouldn't have to go through this kind of stuff. And then I, I met a guy who was a chiropractor. And he straightened up his back and his legs. Within three days, all of that had cleared up. His hearing is back. I mean, we had even taken classes to learn sign language. That's how much we knew, you know, this was going to happen to him. And now he's just as normal. Well, I say normal. He is my kid. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> as, just as normal as anyone else. Yeah. That's a great result. Amazing. It's pretty crazy. Uh, some of the techniques that you use, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw something at you. Okay. Because I know there's a lot of people out there like me who you were talking about, you know, you have a hard time just being with yourself. You don't like yourself. You can't forgive yourself for things that you've done. 
how do you help someone get past all that? Well, it's it's so individual to each person, which is not me avoiding the question. I am going to say some stuff, but <laughs> um, it's it's really important to say it's very individual to each person because suffering is is highly personal to each person. And the minute you try and box it up and say, right, everyone who's got that suffering needs to have this this treatment or this whatever it is, that's disrespectful to the individual spirit of that person. Mm. So to me, my first step, it's not really a step because it's where I come from really. And because I've been I've been working with people for decades now. And something I discovered early on is that basically I believe that people are fine as they are in essence. Mm -hmm. You're right on the inside. And I've met a few people who are not fine, very few. And that has kind of, you know, maybe I was naive, but I've understood there are some people that are just really nasty people. Um, and that's just the way it is. And someone else might be able to cope with them, but I can't. So, okay, so that's fair enough. But in general, people are fine and good on the inside, right? So if they're suffering, it usually means there's something wrong. So a really good thing to do to start with is to try and identify what is wrong. Okay, so not wrong with you, but wrong with your life. What's what's wrong? Because let's say someone's beating you every day. It's appropriate to be really miserable and angry about that. If you get miserable and angry about that, it doesn't mean that you're mentally unwell. It means you're well, because that's an appropriate reaction. Equally, if you're putting a load of crap in your body, it's appropriate that you feel bad in your body. You know, that doesn't mean that, you, that you're that um, you wrong or confused or flawed in some way. It means that your body's telling you you're putting a load of crap in your body and you should listen. So it's, a, it's really useful to actually start by saying, okay, what's going on that is contributing to this suffering right now in my life? And that's a really good place to start because those are things very often that can be affected in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's good to start there before you start going back, back, back in time, you know. And and sometimes what the, the key thing that's going on for somebody is they're not following their heart. They, they would love to be doing something and they're not doing it. They would love to be telling somebody something or asking somebody something or expressing themselves to somebody or to people in a certain way and they're not doing it they're they're hiding they're holding back and for some people the cure if you like is simply to follow um the calling that they have to just simply follow where does their heart want to go and i've seen people do that and all sorts of issues just disappear mm. now again like you were saying a caveat you know that doesn't necessarily happen for everybody, but I've seen that happen. Equally, for some people, I've seen people come in and sit down and start talking to me, and I've taken one look at them, and I've thought, okay, you're getting probably 50% of the amount of sleep that you actually need. You are not drinking enough water, and you're having far too much sugar. You know, I can see that in somebody, right? So I've seen people reorganize their lives and get enough sleep and suddenly a lot of issues vanish okay. i've seen people cut sugar out out of their diet and suddenly they're losing the weight their mind works better their skin is clearer their energy is better their optimism is better you know so sometimes there's something very simple that can be done sometimes it's something much more complex and then uh, my priority in that is to uh, investigate that gently and to not dismantle structures that that person has in their life too quickly because the thing is all the structures that we have in our lives were originally put in there for a good reason mm. because otherwise they wouldn't be there because building a structure is work so sometimes people have structures in their lives which are uh, protective structures which are left over from a time when they were in danger of one kind or another and the structures are still present so it could be that the structures are not necessary, not needed anymore now, but if you just take them out, the person is going to fall over. 
So there was this hilarious story. There was a house um, in the countryside near where I used to live. And uh, somebody bought this house and it was like an old cottage, lovely old cottage, a bit derelict looking. And against one of the outside walls, there was a massive pile of soil or dirt that were all just there, leaning against the side of the house. And this person went in and they got the contractors in and the contractors, you know, looked at the property. First thing they did was say, right, let's get rid of that pile of soil. So they brought in the diggers and they took away the soil. They moved it away. And within a week, the house had fallen over because the soil was actually holding up the house. Hmm. It was a big pile, you know, halfway up the wall. And it was actually holding up the house. <laughs> so some of our structures, they might not be great or relevant now, but they are holding us up. So we need to create new structures before we dismantle the old ones quite often. You know, so if someone's got very complex uh, combination of problems that they're trying to deal with, it's important to be very mindful of that in terms of the timing and the structures and to put things in place that are nourishing and supporting that person before you start taking away the structures. A bit like if you put up scaffolding to repoint the wall, you've got to finish repointing the wall, make sure it's secure before you take away the scaffolding. You know, you, you, you've got to make sure you're secure. So that's just a very, very short answer. But usually if someone's got that sort of thing going on, it would be quite a few conversations to work through it. And I might suggest they go and do some therapeutic activities or uh, some nutritional work or some meditation work as part of the process of working out what's the best way to tackle whatever it is they're dealing with. So some of the stuff you can do like through Zoom, but some of the work you do needs to be one-on-one -on -one in person. Yes. And let's say I'm working with someone in the States. Okay. And there's some stuff that, that, that really they should do that'd be best if we do in person, then I will help them work out how to find somebody to do something with them over there. Mm -hmm. So some, you know, there are brilliant people all over the planet. So sometimes someone can have a really good time do, working with me on Zoom and then doing, let's say, some Reiki with a brilliant Reiki practitioner over there. But uh, Pelawa, for example, which is very helpful for all of these things, can be done remotely. So I can do that for people wherever they are in the world. So they are then getting treatments as well. I was hoping you'd say you were going to fly us over there and we can <laughs> do our sessions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, come on over. Everybody's welcome. <laughs> If someone does want to talk to you or they want to get a hold of one of your books, what is your website? Beingspace.world. All right. And do you do social media? Yes, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. Right. Do you and have all a, of those links are on the website? Everything's on the website. Do you have a YouTube channel? Oh, yes. And that's on the website as well. Okay. <laughs> they can listen to the podcast on the website. They can watch YouTube videos. They can book a pillow treatment if they want one. They can book a call with me. They can read eBooks. They can, you know, it's all on there. And it's all on one page as well. Wow. Uh, Technology is wonderful, isn't it? I know. I just so fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you, Catherine. I appreciate you coming on the show. And I'd like to have you back on in the future. I would be delighted. <laughs> and I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.